in the back rooms, there are many, many different items and objects and entities and levels, yada, yada, yada. Some of these objects and items are safe to consume, and some are not. Anyways, today in this video, I'm going to be making three dangerous food items from the back rooms. I'm going to show you how to make them, and I'm going to rank them all on a scale of 1 to 10, 1 being the worst, 10 being the best. These are consumable food items from the lore that are not safe to eat, that can make you feel weird, have bad effects, or they could be made out of a mysterious meat that might be from humans. Which some of y'all wanted me to make that, by the way, that's crazy. Not trying to catch a felony for a video. In the first episode of the series, I actually made regular, normal backrooms foods that are safe in the lore. But this episode, it's all about the deadly and unsafe consumable items from the backrooms. Without further ado, leave a like if you want more videos like this. And thank you so much for watching and supporting the series let's head to the kitchen and let's make some stuff shall we first off all this script writing and talking has made me kind of thirsty so let's whip up some homemade liquid pain that's right everybody's favorite aggressive red liquid from the back rooms and in honor of liquid pain actually being added back to the wiki now i decided i want to make it first in this video and make it for myself inside of the lore of the back rooms liquid pain is considered a acidic substance with a reddish hue it has a ton of negative effects on wanderers if they drink it like heartburn soreness of mouth fatigue sweating and general sickness and it can be found on pretty much any level of the back rooms. Now, liquid paint is actually a variant of almond water, and it has a similar smell. But other than that, all we have is pretty much that it's an acidic red liquid. Let's make it. So for this recipe, you'll need a glass of cold water, red 40 food dye, my favorite, or some kind of drink mix or powder. I'm using Gamersup's raw meat flavor. You'll also need lemon juice and some cayenne pepper to make it spicy. To make liquid pain, all you need to do is throw all that together. You'll just get your glass of water, put your dye and your Gamersup's or drink mix inside, squeeze a drop of lemon juice in, and then throw a dash of paprika on top for garnish. And here we have it, folks. Our very own liquid pain that hopefully doesn't have the same effects. All right, let's try some liquid pain, ladies and gentlemen. This smells toxic, like absolutely vile. It smells very spicy, dude. I mean, I did, I did just put like cayenne in there. I'm getting the raw meat smell, I'm getting that right off the bat. Lemon juice and lime juice. Uh, I smell red 40, you can kind of taste it when you smell it. All right, well, there's only one way to figure out how this tastes. I think we should just take a few sips down the hatch and see if liquid pain is uh, good enough to drink or if it's bad enough to avoid. Bottoms up. Ooh, okay, right off the bat. Ooh, that's sour. I get the lemon and lime, like flavoring juice, very sour. I also instantly taste the cayenne pepper. I instantly taste the cayenne pepper. Uh, this stuff is no joke. Instantly spicy. Ooh, you feel in the back of your throat. Pause. You can definitely feel that spice in there. It doesn't taste too bad. It tastes like a spicy Hawaiian punch. There's literally like spice though. It sounds like, it feels like you just ate a hot pepper. So taste wise, I'm gonna give this a six out of 10. If it was less spicy and more like lemonade-y, I would definitely like it more. Six out of 10 for taste. Would I drink this in the back rooms? I'm not really sure. I don't think I would. I don't think I would at all. Definitely not. But it's cool to create, I guess. I love seeing like all the little spice chunks floating around. That's awesome. <laughs> It burns, it burns. For the second item of this video, I want to make another type of drinkable liquid because this is the third most popular one. It is cashew water. Now, the wiki says that cashew water is found commonly on negative levels of the back rooms, meaning it's more unstable and just generally an unsafe thing to consume. It looks and smells and tastes identical to almond water. However, cashew water, of course, is made from cashews and it has negative effects. So instead of almond water, you know, healing your sanity and healing your body cashew water actually attracts entities to you and it also makes you feel like a numb pain sensation if you drink it or touch it if you even just have a bottle of cashew water on your person in the back rooms then entities will kind of smell that and be drawn to it so let's go ahead and make it and uh <laughs> let's hope that i make it out alive so what you'll need is a cup of raw cashews. Make sure they're raw. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Four cups of water, some type of bowl, a strainer, maple syrup, 
some vanilla extract, some salt, and some cinnamon. All of that's for flavorings, and of course, you'll need a blender. Now, if you recall the almond water that I made in the last part of this series, this is kind of similar. The first step you want to take is you want to pour the cashews in a bowl of water and soak them for about four hours. This softens them up and makes them easier to blend. After that, take them out, drain them off, and then kind of pat them dry with a paper towel. Next, open up your blender, pour two cups of water inside, and then put those cashews in the water and blend the crap out of them. Blend them until you're done blending. Then you'll wanna add the remaining two cups of water on top of that into the blender or until you reach your desired color. Keep mixing until you're satisfied with the liquidity. If there's chunks, just strain them out. Now that we have our cashew milky mixture extract here, you're gonna to wanna to pour the cashew milk stuff into a fresh new cold glass of water to dilute it. This can be mineral water, this can be tap water, whatever you have. Pour enough until you get the desired color and the desired texture and the desired translucidness. Is that even a word? I don't even think that's a word. And here we have cashew water. Cashew water. This is very, very similar to the almond water that I made, and it's because it's the same concept. It's a nut that's been sogged, pulverized, then turned and mixed with mineral water or water into this mixture, the slurry, if you will. This one really comes down to if you like almonds or cashews more, but then again, this is supposed to have negative effects. If you have this on your person, in the back rooms, it's supposed to attract entities to attack you. It's essentially ringing the dinner bell. So let's see if it's good enough to risk ringing the dinner bell in the back rooms, and let's see if we should even keep this in the backpack. Bottoms up. Hmm. You get a very light taste of maple syrup. You get that cinnamon as well. You can kind of taste it at the end. It's smooth. It's very light, very cloudy. You can kind of taste the cashews. I could have put more in there. I kind of went light because I'm not a big fan of cashews. I'm going to give it a seven out of, I'm going to give it a six out of 10. I could have made it better, but the concept of the taste itself, obviously, uh, it's good, but you know, the effects are awful. But the taste itself is more refreshing tasting than almond water was. Almond water wasn't really that like satisfying to eat. Sorry, drink. Almost the same as almond water, less than lucky milk, worse tasting than liquid pain, which is a sentence that I thought I would never say. Thanks guys. What am I doing with my life? And finally, for this video, the long-awaited part, I want to make a party-goer cake. Just like the comment suggested, except I won't be using any flesh from living beings. Wink, wink. Anyways, I'm gonna base this design of the cake off of this kind of cake, and we're gonna see if the party goers actually are good bakers and they know how to make a cake. I'll be the judge of it. Let's get to it. What you'll need for a party goer cake is a box of red velvet cake mix, a tub of cream cheese frosting, red 40 food dye again, my favorite of course, red decorating dust or red decorating sand, and maybe some decorative eyeballs. I'll let you find the source for your own eyeballs. I stole some from my friend and I tried it and it didn't taste good, so I got these new ones. It's a joke, YouTube. I didn't actually use eyeballs from my friends in the cake, you silly little goose. Anyways, to prepare the cake, you'll follow the directions on the back of the cake mix. I like to add a little extra egg and a little sour cream to mine for some denseness. Mwah. Then you wanna grab your spring cake pan or whatever cake pan you have, pour that battered mixture inside and bake it according to the instructions on the back. I'm sure you can figure this out yourself. To find out if the cake is done, you can stick the end of a fork inside the part of the cake and if there's any cake that sticks to it, it's not done. But once it actually is, take it out of the oven and let it cool completely before we can, you know, decorate it. That's an important step. You don't want it to be hot or warm. Let it cool completely. Once the cake is as cold as your feet, when they're outside of the sheets on a cold winter morning, you can open up the tub of frosting and you can start decorating however you see fit. So for this video, I'm actually using the piping kit that I have here. That way I can decorate it properly. You don't have to. Also try and not eat a ton of this cream cheese frosting. I eat like way too much. Make sure you keep some of the cream cheese frosting as well to the side. That way you can add a little bit of red dye later on and have red frosting. But decorate the cake however you like, do whatever you want. And once you're completely finished with the decorations and you're happy with your frosting, dust some of that crushed up human powder, I mean red decorating dust, on top of the cake. And then throw some of your locally sourced eyeballs on top as well in whatever pattern you want. And here it is, an authentic party goer cake that you can eat with only a few human parts. Okay, 
After a long day of baking, we are here with this party goer cake. I'm trying not to drop it. This is what I came up with. It's very simple. I want to make it as easy as possible. That way y'all can follow along. And I'm not a master baker, okay? Just a little red velvet cake, a little design on it, little eyeballs. We didn't go too crazy, but this smells and looks phenomenal. Let's cut a slice. And let's see if it's worth going to level fun to uh, break in and eat some cake, even if it's like your friend turned into a cake. I have a feeling this is gonna be the best item I've made though. Let's cut into this corner piece here, get a little bit of the smile action in here like this. Cut the nicest little triangle that we can. It's been a while since I've had red velvet cake, so I'm pretty excited to try this. There we go. Okay. Nice, moist cake, as you can see there. Well, you might not be able to, but this is what a slice will look like. And I think I did a pretty dang good job uh, replicating that one picture on the internet of the bar. Here we are with the cake. Got my fork, got the cake, got my slice right here. Let's just go for the front, right? Let's get a nice eyeball in. That's the bite right there that we're going with. Only one way to see if this is good enough to taste. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. That is good. A piece of the back. More frosting back here. Some more sprinkles. I think I did something here. I think I created the best backrooms food item in real life right here. This will never be topped. Unless you guys can recommend me something else to make that's better than this. I don't know how you're gonna get better than a party goer cake, quite frankly. 10 out of 10, the first 10 out of 10 in this series. If you think there's another 10 out of 10 out there, let me know what you think it is. This one will not be top for a while. I'm gonna eat like half this cake. You guys will be going to the outro. This is fantastic. Just look at that. Just look at that. Look at that. So those were three backrooms foods, but in real life, I had a ton of fun making this video, if you could not tell. I think I actually enjoyed the more dangerous foods better, but leave a like and let me know if you want me to continue this series where I make stuff in real life. I think you all are really enjoying it, and like I said, I have a ton of fun making them, and I would enjoy doing some more. I just need more ideas from you guys on what I should even do. Anyways, hopefully you did enjoy watching the video. Uh, the recipes for all this stuff will be pinned in the comments. If you want to make them at home, you can follow along, make your own party goer cake make your own liquid pain make your own cashew water yada 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 i've got a whole cake to finish so i will end up this video here peace and love bye bye and i hope these dangerous backrooms foods don't come back to bite me